Hey guys, Ike here from Ike'sOutdoors.com. I'm here today to show you how to put up a ground blind. I'm also going to show you, tell you a little bit about why I put up a ground blind. Now I'm going to do two different ground blinds today, and they're two really different scenarios. We've got one scenario here where we've got a lot of good cover that I'm going to put my ground blind in, and the other area that I've got is really an open field that's got a little bit of timber around it. So they're two really completely different scenarios but to me they're the kind of scenarios that you're going to run into uh, when you're actually putting a ground blind up now the type of ground blind that you're going to use it's completely up to you use whatever you can afford if you've got a if you got the money for a nice big rhino blind or a barrett or something like that great buy one of those um, i use the ameristep 70 dollars ones from uh, walmart and i got a one nice big three-man one that i bought from sportsman's guide for around the same price you can see this is the area that I hunt. This is the area that I killed my nice buck last year and killed a couple of does off of. We don't really need ground blinds. Um, it's a nice thing to have ground blinds for, like my son, my wife, uh, Kyle Tucker. He's going to hunt with me this year, so me and him can get in a ground blind together, um, which I don't like being in a ground blind with Kyle that much, but you do what you got to do. Um, and then, you know, Kyle can bring his wife over um, and then his daughter. And we can all kind of come over and hunt and, and uh, be able to be in the ground blind without having to get him up off of the ground and still be relatively safe. So, um, I'm going to put a ground blind here in this cover. And then I'm also going to go down to the bottom down here, what we call the swamp. And I'm going to put one in the swamp. And I'm going to show you how I'm doing it. And I'm going to show you why I'm putting it here. Now, to start out with why I'm putting it here is I actually have a tree stand right back over that way up about 45 yards um, and the reason why I'm putting a ground blind here is because last year in that tree stand I did have some deer that came by me but a lot of them were coming right up the hill here and going right down the hill right here in front of this down tree me and Jacob actually sat here during uh, rifle season and had a deer come literally within five yards of us right here into this tree uh, most of them are passing right about 15 to 20 yards in front of us so it is a perfect area uh, to put a ground blind with a little bit of coverage. Now, the other reason I'm putting it out now um, is because I want the deer to become acclimated to this ground blind here. I don't want them to come in on opening day and see that ground blind and, go and turn around and leave because deer know everything that's in their area. This is their home. Coming in here and putting up a ground blind would be like popping one up in your backyard. If you walked out of your house one day and went to your backyard and you seen a ground blind there, you'd know something was up. But if you walk by that ground blind every day, which I'd love if someone come put a ground blind up in my backyard, but um, if you walk by that ground blind every day and notice that it, it never changed, it never moved, nothing suspicious was happening there, no one ever shot you at you from it, then eventually you're going to get acclimated to that ground blind and it's going to be no big deal. And eventually you're going to walk past that ground blind, someone's going to stick an arrow in you or for the deer. So um, what I'm going to do here, a lot of guys on this ground blind we'll just put this thing right here and use this for a cover now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go back in a little bit and i'm going to i'm going to cut some of the limbs down and i'm going to find an area nice and big uh big enough that i can put my ground blind in there and i'm actually going to go ahead and um, use some of the, the cover there that's already there i'm going to cut some limbs down i'm going to i'm going to reposition i'm going to put my ground blind right down right down in the middle of this thing here and uh and give me give myself plenty of cover so i'll get that set up what i'm basically going to do i don't know if i have enough camera ba camera battery to film all this but basically what i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut this limb right out here i'm gonna cut a few of the smaller limbs out plop it right down here by this tree uh and then use some of those limbs to cover it so i probably won't show you the guys me actually cutting it because that's just that's just me working um but i'll show you guys that this is the before i'll show you guys the after and then i'll show you what i'm doing with my ground blind. and then we'll move down to the swamp and we'll put one up down there Got a chainsaw, I'll bring a chainsaw. I got a chainsaw and I left it at home. You wanna know my secret to success when it comes to killing deer? Um, this is it right here. It's June, it's hot, and I'm out here working. That's the key to killing deer, is to be out here uh, putting in the work. This is where our life-saving water comes into play. This is why you bring plenty of it, especially when you're a fat old man like I am. I get winded and sweat so easy. So, what I've done is I've got, really don't look that different probably for you guys, 
what I did was I basically cleared out a bunch of stuff in the back. I'm going to leave this limb right here in the front. I'm going to drop my ground blind right in there wherever it'll fit. And then the stuff that I cut, I'm going to use, I'm going to position here, I'm going to position in the back, and stuff like that. Now, the other reason that I do this in June is because of all the noise I just made. Um, I'm standing here talking, and obviously I'm talking loud, but the deer aren't going to be as affected by it in June as they are, say, uh, September, October. So, that's the other reason we're out here in the heat doing this stuff. Um, so we're going to put our blind right back in there, and we're going to brush it in. And now, another reason why I didn't do this last year is because all this stuff was still alive and still green. So, um, I didn't want to brush in a blind here with a bunch of dead stuff and... Uh, or a bunch of stuff that was green and alive and then have it die on me and have a bunch of dead stuff with a background of a bunch of uh, living stuff. So, this year, everything in here is dead. Thank goodness because it made it easier to cut and easier to deal with. But everything in here is dead. So all that dead stuff that I cut, I can actually take now and put in front of the blind and I can actually uh, use that to brush it in and it'll look natural. Now, when we get to our second setup down in the swamp, not going to have that benefit so uh, we'll show you that when we get to it but I'm going to go ahead and put the ground blind up in here and we'll, we'll uh, start brushing this thing in okay so I got it up um, I wanted to get it tucked back in there a little bit more but I couldn't get that done so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this down timber right here that's fallen off plus some of the stuff that I've cut and I'm basically I'm just going to pile it up here above my uh, around the ground blind and in front of it beside it and stuff like that and just try my best to uh to brush this thing in now i'm also going to stake this thing down and i'm going to tie up all of my hubs now one of the reasons to tie up your hub is till so this thing doesn't blow away the other thing is i can tie up that hub to this tree over here and then i can tie up that hub to that tree over there and it'll keep it nice and tight and that way it won't uh, blow in and when i come to it it's not collapsed the other thing you can do if you can is take the top and tie it off to a branch above it and get it nice and tight. I don't have that luxury here. Um, so, uh, but that's nice. I'll tie all my four hubs down as tight as I can. I'll stake this thing down to the ground now and I'm gonna go ahead and brush it in. And this is our, again, I'm not gonna be able to film all this. Um, this is our before and we'll show you the after here in just a few minutes. Okay, so there's ground blind number one. I'm covered in sweat. My glasses are covered in sweat too. There's ground blind number one, and you can see I got it brushed in about the best I can. Um, I got branches in front of it, I got branches over the top of it. I got my paracord going to this tree, paracord going to that tree, keep my hubs out. I got it wrapped here, and I got it wrapped behind that tree back there to keep those hubs out and locked in. All the branches in front of it uh, are going to do the best I can to conceal it and make it look natural. Uh, the other thing is you're going to see that some of these are blocking windows and yes they are going to cut down on your uh, opportunities for shots um, i try to keep as much below and above the windows as i possibly can um, but i got a good shot opportunity at the front window got a good shot opportunity out of these two windows and if the deer gets past me i do have a shot opportunity out of that window there now on the opposite side i've got a, the same kind of thing going as i've got right here i've got branches over it and i've got a small window and the reason i've done that is because the majority of my shots are going to come right here uh, at least i think deer do funny things they could come in and go that way or they could get past me without me being able to get shot so um, i've left the biggest chance of my shot opportunities i've left those windows as open as possible now the other two i've covered up a little bit just in case uh, the deer go that way i can still get a shot but i'm also concealed so it's important to kind of you got to give up the lesser percentages of shots to maximize the the uh, percentages of the the good shots that you think you're going to get if that makes any sense so the majority of my shots i think are going to be right here i've got those two windows open with good uh, lanes if they get past me or if they go that direction i do have shot opportunities there but i've also got uh, trees in the way to conceal myself because if you have all your windows wide open and a deer comes in and sees you you're not going to get a shot anyway so i lower the percentage of shot opportunities that i'm going to have to up the percentage of the deer not seeing me if that makes sense so that's our brushed in blind there and we're going to go down now to the swamp and we're going to put in a blind out in the open as open as this area gets so i'm going to grab my gear grab my water grab my other blind and start my hike that one i actually got to walk down to so 
We'll head down to the swamp now. Guess what I forgot? My backpack. Got a backpack at home that I bring especially for this stuff. And I left it at home. So guess what I'm using to carry all my stuff down to the swamp? Thank God for Walmart bags. I look like a hobo, but thank God for Walmart bags. Life-saving water. All my tools. In a Walmart bag. Okay, so we're down in the swamp. Um, I call this area the swamp because it's almost always wet down here except in the heat of the summer. Even right now, it's still wet down here. Um, there's a creek right behind me here. It's just a nat little natural spring back here. and It has a little bit of water that runs through here. Same way back on the opposite side of this place. There's a spring that goes back there that just kind of keeps the ground back there wet. It doesn't really actually, it's not really a creek, but it just kind of keeps the ground wet. So I call this area the swamp. And as you can see behind me, this is a lot different area than what we have up on top of the hill where I brushed that other blind in. Um, the deer are coming from my right here uh, off of the neighbor's property. There's a pipeline there that's mowed and the deer are actually coming through here. They're hitting that spring over there and then they're coming through and they're either going that way or they're going that way. Um, I got a ground blind, or I mean I got a, a ladder stand right back there. I can see the ladder. And last year I set that up mainly, as we've talked about before, as an observation stand. I could see this whole bottom. I got this property when deer season was actually already still already going on. So I had very little time to scout. And I put that up mainly so I could see this whole bottom. Now here we are in year two and I know what the deer are doing. I know the deer are coming from this direction. And then they're splitting here either going one way or another. So I'm going to put my ground blind up right here. Problem is, it's going to be in a place where it's going to be pretty much out in the open. So I'm going to scout around try to find a place that I can at least find a little bit of cover for it and go ahead and start the procedures of putting it out. So I'm going to scout around. I'm going to turn the camera off here while I scout around for an area to put this thing. And the thing that you want to keep in mind too is one, what way are the deer coming from? For me, they're coming from my right over here, which is roughly northeast. Um, so you also got to think what's the predominant wind that we have during hunting season for us we have a lot of west winds we have a lot of north winds and we have a lot of south winds so the only thing for me here that won't work is really an east wind because that would blow it directly to where they're coming from so i want to put my ground blind right back in there somewhere so if i got a if i got a um oh well not actually not right there because if i've got a if I've got a north wind, it's going to blow it right back this direction. Okay, let me, let me get my bearings here. If I've got a north wind, it's going to blow it this direction. Uh, north is going to be coming out from this way, so north wind is good for me. South wind is bad. East wind is going to be okay. If it's straight out of the east, it's going to be all right. West wind is going to be good. So, predominantly, we have a northwest wind, or northerly or westerly wind, so that's going to be right there. Um, I have to get my bearings straight. but. Right there is where I'm going to want to put my ground blind to have the best available uh, wind for this area. Okay, so I found my location that I'm going to put my blind. Uh, where we filmed just a minute ago was off to my right about 30 yards. It's where that little creek is. They're coming up, not exactly on that creek, about 10 yards this side of the creek. So they're coming up and they're going this way. Now they are also going up the hill, but I've got that other ground blind up there and I've got a tree stand up there. And if I can't get them when they're broadside, if they turn that way, I'm going to be shooting them in the ass anyway. I'm sorry, I'm going to be shooting them in the butt. <laughs> but I'm going to be shooting them, uh, they're going to be facing away from me and I don't want to take that shot. So I moved this direction and the reason I moved this direction is because we got a pine tree here. we got a pine tree here and this is the only substantial uh, brush in this area right here. So I'm going to plop my ground blind down right here. I'm going to face one window out this direction and I'm going to face one window back that direction and that's going to give me good shot opportunities the other reason is this grass um, you're thinking well this grass is going to be dead in the winter time it's going to die well you're right but as long as i don't mow it uh, or knock it down it's going to stay up and it's going to stay here um, like i said i've got a tree stand up there and i've seen this place in the winter time the grass is still really nice and tall so i've got a little bit of this grass to block in my ground blind in this situation i'm not actually going to brush this ground blind in i'm going to use that pine tree as a front I'm gonna use a little bit of that as a backdrop and I've got a tree right there that I'm gonna use as a little bit of a, a, a brush in and I've got a pine tree right over here that I'm gonna use a little bit as a backdrop and I'm gonna have my grass right here in the front so I'm not actually gonna brush this in I've just found a natural area that offers me the best area of concealment 
in an open area. And it also works well to give me a about 15, 20 yard shot there and about a 15, 20 yard shot here. At most here, if they're on the other side of this clearing, I've got about a 40 yard shot, which I'm probably gonna pass on unless it's just perfect conditions. So it, it gives me a good shot opportunity. Also still offers me good cover in what otherwise is an open area. Okay, so I want to show you guys something real quick that I made to help in these ground blinds in these open areas like you see behind me. Uh, I made two different ones of this. They're pretty simple. I wish I'd have made these a little bit bigger, but they're pretty simple to make and they're pretty easy to make. If you have a ground blind that's going to be out in the open, you can make these little stakes like this. This one has just a uh, screw end on it, and I've actually just taken it and welded it to some square tubing. And what I'm going to do with this is if I find a place to put a ground blind that's got a tree nearby but doesn't offer good coverage, I can actually break a limb, which I prefer to break a limb off an evergreen, they'll stay green a little bit longer. And I can actually take this, put it into the tree, and screw this right in. And I can take my limb, I can shave it down with my knife, and I can shove it right down in there. Now, like I said, I wish I'd have made these a little bit bigger. This is what I had available. Um, I wish I'd have made them like an inch or something like that. The other one that I made instead of having a screw on the end actually just has a stake has the same top on it but it just has a stake that goes down in the ground and actually i can take this and i can push this down the ground step on these if i need to and do the exact same thing find me a limb or some plants or something like that and i can actually just stick right down in there in front of my ground blind so these are a handy little tool to make or a handy little tool to have if you're putting out a ground blind and they are super easy to make if you have access to a welder a little 110 welder like you get at uh, lowe's or someplace like that is all you need like i said piece of square tubing uh, bigger than this would be best piece of uh, solid stock that you're going to use for your handle here and you're going to use for this piece here ground it down actually this is a uh, galvanized nail so just welded the head to that and this is just a lag bolt so that's a simple easy way to to uh, make something that you can brush in your own ground blind with okay so that's all there is to that one all i did was pop it out and uh, ran my paracord down to a couple trees that I had available, staked it down to the ground. In this area, I'm just actually using a terrain to brush this thing in. I'm not putting a single thing uh, on this on this thing to hide it. Um, I've got the deer coming from this direction. They're gonna be coming from just behind where the camera's at now. And so I've got the deer coming from this direction. I've got a window right here so I can shoot into this area. And I've also got a, an opportunity to shoot over there but the best thing is I can see the deer coming from that direction so when I see him if I don't get a shot opportunity there if they turn and they come up this way I've got a shot opportunity here with this big pine tree in my way here and a little bit of brush behind me there to kind of break up the outline of the tent or the ground blind I've got the advantage of hopefully the deer won't be able to see me so no brushing in on that one got the grass right here you know up to about window height all the way around it got our pine tree and i'll take some pictures from around to show you guys pretty much how this thing looks from every angle but you know keep in mind the deer are going to come from from that direction this is primarily going to be my shooting lane right here i'm going to be pretty much shooting right at where the camera is at now so that's how i do it and that's how I, I brush that one in so there's two examples of how i brush in my ground blinds or how i set my ground blinds up i look for an area where i've seen deer before i look for an area that's got be a little bit of brush or a little bit of cover and oftentimes I use a ground blind in an opportunity or in places where I'm going to take my family or in places where I can't put a tree stand. You can see this area right here, uh, Just I might be able to put a tree stand down there right on top of the trail where the deer are coming from and then I got a few opportunities to put uh, tree stands right back here where I would have, I'd be in the open in that tree, I'd have a lot of brush to cut in that tree. It's just adv advantageous for me to just put this ground blind in right here and use the terrain to cover it in. So uh, that's how I do my ground blinds um, and that's how I, I brush in a ground blind and this is how I, I use a ground blind just in a natural setting. So uh, for more be sure to like, share, and subscribe to these videos. For more product reviews, how-to videos, and more in this series uh, be sure to check us out. We're on Facebook uh, under Ikes Outdoors and our website is ikesoutdoors.com. Appreciate you guys watching.